What is up, peeps? It's TV HD, and I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of Talk Thing, a series where I talk about a lot of random stuff. And again, in this episode, like the last one, I'm gonna be talking about a childhood experience that I experienced. Well, obviously, it's called a childhood experience. That's not relatively of the funny kind when it comes to actually the situation, but speaking about it now, it's kind of funny to laugh at how much of an idiot I was. So without further ado, let's get into this. Okay, so I was a kind of person who had a lot of influence around me and I uh, had basically two types of friends which is really weird because I I know you usually when you're in high school or uh, yeah it was around high school you would have your group of friends and that's really it. everyone else really didn't matter you may have you know like conversed with other people or you know integrated with other people but you had your main friend group. Now I kind of had, uh, I had a main friend group, but then I also had people who wanted me to hang out with them. For one sole reason, it was just because my brother hanged out with them and they also lived on my estate. So these people, if you're watching this, you know who you are. Um, these people were, uh, they're not my type of people. They, the things they were doing and the stuff they're up to was just not really what I wanted to do. Um, I did hang out with them. They are awesome people. They are really cool people. They still are to this day. Um, but it's just, it's just, they just weren't, who I was, you know, my friends I was actually with at the time uh, and actually hanging out with were a lot more like me and a lot more uh, matched to my personality, let's say. But these other kids, they were the cool kids. They were hanging out with, you know, the popular people in school and, you know, when you're younger, you always want to be on the popular side. Well, I was encouraged so many times to just uh, chill out with them and do what they're doing um, and it kind of led to a situation involving gangs. That's that's gangs if you if you don't know what I said there. So these people that lived on my estate, we had our own little gang called RL. <laughs> it's kind of stupid when you look at it from a broad perspective, but there's still people to this day that uh, you know do. Let's, I'm going to say the word rep uh, as they call it. They do rep RL. They do are uh, involved with this 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 gang situation. It's not what you think of US gang. There's no gun violence or anything. The worst you're gonna get is a stabbing, which is not it's not good. But it's not gun violence and it's not gangs at a massive scale. It's more, oh, I like this road. I'm going to make a gang with it. So the people I was hanging out with usually regularly hung out with these people who were involved in this gang stuff. Now, we also had a rival gang. Um, and I say we, uh, not as in I was a part of the gang, but because I lived in that road. And a lot of my young life was involved with a lot of people who were involved in this gang stuff. So it was relevant to me um, in terms of, you know, them being my friends at the time. So it's not, it's not like I was a part of this gang, um, but these were friends I hung out with who were involved with people in this gang or involved with that gang stuff. So our rival was known as Wildstone, which is a, um, again, it's a place in our town that decided to go, do you know what, we want a gang in this place and there was a rivalry formed. Now, I don't know how exactly these rivalries were formed. I don't know how it became a rivalry or why it's such a big rival rivalry, but if it was like the rivalry where if you wanted to go to town, to go to the shops, you had to be careful because you would probably run into someone who was also from your rival gang because you live in the same town and you have the same town center. So the story really begins one day where I don't know how exactly it came to uh, came to be to me, but I think I was hanging out in this area, a, a park that was actually, literally, well actually it's literally right behind my house. My house uh, at the time where I was living is loads of other um, houses connected to it of, of course, and behind that was a park. And if you go out our front door and just turn to your left, there's an entrance to this park that will end up leading behind our house. So we go in this park and we usually hang out either uh, in the bushes, which sounds really creepy, but no, it's, it's we just chill out in some sort of base area we'd make, or we would end up uh, chilling out in like the mini playground, which is really sad when you come and think about it now. But um, we would hang out in those playgrounds and it just came up that RL was going to have a fight with Wildstone and this is not like oh yeah we're gonna come and we're gonna we're gonna beat you up and we're gonna laugh in your face and then run away no it was more we're gonna get some knives we're gonna literally have an intention of murder um <laughs> or at least uh, seriously injuring someone um type ordeal and I was not invited to this um but my friend who was involved said look this is gonna go down um and it was actually going down in our local area, in the area where RL would usually hang out, uh, or where they would be located. Um, and it's, it's literally just down the road from my house, believe it or not. 
So this was whole, I don't know how, but it was planned out um, and they were going to come to us to have a quote unquote knife fight. So my friend goes to me, this is going to go down and if you want to prove that you're um, able to be in this gang or if you're if you want to prove yourself to this gang that you're loyal you're gonna you, you should come with me to this fight and we gotta fight it out and looking at it now that's some pretty serious shit like i know it's not gun violence but it's knife violence and it can literally it is the the, the peak of uk violence and it can literally kill i mean literally end lives so by going there you're proving that you're willing to die for the gang and me being the absolute idiotic person that I was, who always wanted to get approval for being a real gangster, I decided to go, do you know what? Yeah, this sounds like a great idea. Let's go and get some knives and get ready for this fight. So I get some knife, I think, from my kitchen or something like that. I'm not too sure. And uh, my mate also gets his weapon. And we go down to this estate. <laughs> and we sit there and we wait. Now I remember running into someone. He was like, oh, "Yeah, cool, Wagwan. How you doing?" That that was the kind of slang that you'd be going through. Um, and then this person looked at me and said, "Who's this?" And my friend was like, "Oh, he's my friend. He wants to prove himself." Yada yada yada. And he's like, "All right, cool." And then we just we go and we literally chill there for about thirty minutes. Now I'm with these people that at the time I looked up to, but I. To be honest, I don't really look up to them to this day because they were doing things that I shouldn't look up to. And I was looking up to them at the time, wanting to prove myself and be a part of this gang. Um, and <laughs> actually waiting for about 30 minutes. Uh, um, that's not going to be accurate, of course, but waiting for about 30 minutes, let's say, for these people to show up. And they didn't. So we was kind of sitting like going, OK, what, what do we do? But someone did show up. And by someone, I mean a lot of someone's and that of course was the police someone who was actually looking out their window because believe it or not where we would hang out is actually in a literal a square all right in the square in between a lot of flats okay so it's just a, a square and then you've got a lot of flats surrounding it so obviously people live here so they're looking outside seeing a lot of gang people hanging around with weapons in their hand and they're thinking what the fuck is going to happen so they call the police Fucking too right to them. Of course they're going to call the police if they fucking see that shit. So they call the police. The police come around and they start finding weapons of weapons of weapons stashed. Because all, everyone's like, shit, the police are coming. Run, get out of here. And me and my friend had, to, had a really good idea. It was like, okay, let's run to the park we came from. And let's stash our weapons there. And let's just leave that there and hope that it doesn't get found. So we decided to come back. And on the way, my friend was like... Okay, so the police are going to talk to us, so don't rat them out, okay? Don't rat anyone out. So if you don't know what that means, literally, it, can't, it should be self-explanatory if you say ratting someone out. It means don't be a snitch, all right? Don't start talking shit or uh, giving it them any idea whatsoever as to what was going on. So I was trying to be the cool kid, and I was like, yeah, yeah, the police are talking to me, and they're like, okay, so what are you here for? I'm like, nothing, fam, innit? And they're like, okay, so what are you doing? And they're like, nah, nothing, innit? Not nothing, fam. What are you doing here, man? Leave me alone, innit? And I'm, I'm trying to sound like this fucking like real hard guy um who is just st standing alone doing nothing with a ton of people with weapons <laughs> you know it's kind of odds are against me here but I, I just completely didn't i co cooperated but didn't cooperate at the same time i cooperated but made it look like i wasn't cooperating um because deep down i i am a nice guy this is not the stuff i want to do um but i wanted to prove myself and it's so stupid it's really stupid to have that um, literally almost get me killed but they were interviewing me and eventually I was like nah, nothing happened in it and then we, we all got let go um, and me and my friend we went back to see if our knives got found and mine didn't I found mine and I think he lost his because he forgot where he put it <laughs> which is so good like you're trying to hide something you put it somewhere you're not gonna find it then that's a pretty good hiding spot and that's that's pretty it we just a situation where it could have gone to hell and I could not be here to this day speaking into this microphone just because I wanted to prove something to someone that really didn't mean anything to me especially to this day none of them mean anything to me anymore because they're they're not a part of my living life so my point of this video is clearly don't give in to peer pressure I know you're told this all the time but when it comes to things like this it is real you should not give in to this stuff especially when it comes to finishing school or finishing whatever you're doing it really doesn't matter popularity goes out of the window because you all go your separate ways and you all go do your own thing and that's when you start to realize holy shit 
Like, why, why am I giving into this type of peer pressure when it doesn't matter in the end? So that's something I did and that was a mistake I made. I'd like you to learn from that mistake. And if you are in that stage where you're giving into peer pressure, maybe something to do with smoking or just uh, a bad influence in any single way, just sit there and think, is this going to be worth it down the line? You know, um, if I'm getting involved with gangs, will I be involved with gangs for the rest of my life? Will I be putting myself in a situation where I could die almost every day? And rather than giving myself the opportunity to have a successful life. So I'd like you to take that message as it is. And thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments down below if you've had any similar situations. And thank you for liking as well as subscribing. And peace.